So this is going to be an in-depth uh, guide on how to use Mirage to his fullest, um, utilizing every aspect of his kit in every way. Um, a lot of people think that Mirage is actually a very low tier character, but in the right hands, he can actually be one of the top contending characters. Um, so in this guide, we're going to go over how to fully use his clones and decoys to the fullest, the way they mark, move, uh, provide cover. We're going to use every part of his kit to the fullest, and we're, we're going to go over all of that in this guide. So, as a Mirage player, you have to be aware of a lot of things, mainly the way your enemy, the enemy's perspective is, and where they're looking. So, that's one of the main things you want to keep in mind when using Mirage, because if you aren't keeping that in mind, then 9% of your bamboozles are not going to effectively work on smarter players. Um, an example of that would be this dummy is facing straight at me forward. So if I were to summon a clone out right now, it would basically do nothing. Um, I can teach you a way to use him though in this manner, but we'll get into that later. So to start off, Mirage, Mirage's passive allows him to be invis while reviving teammates or respawning teammates out of beacon. And this is pretty straightforward. The beacon is just a free respawn for your teammates. Um, you can sometimes use the invis to play off of the respawn beacon, going in and out of invis, back and forth. Um, the main deal with his passive though is the invis res with his teammates. Being able to re revive your teammates basically anywhere in the open, as long as no one saw you go invis into the revive. It's essentially just a free revive at that point, and once you get up, it's basically a free reset for both you and your teammate, so whenever you have a chance to res your teammate, you should definitely go for it. Um, if you add your ult to the revive, just to add some extra clutter and audio cues, it'll definitely bring your chances of a clutch revive up to near 100% of the time. But his main part of his kit is his tack and his ult. So to get started with his tack is it's pretty straightforward. Tap it. Send it out another me. Sends a clone yeah, running forward. And if you were to tap and hold it, this is easier on controller. It would actually send it out, and the moment you let go of the tack button, it would control it, it will stop it, and you would start mimicking your movements at that point bam so. Goes the huh. so now it's mimicking oh all of my movements very little delay between when i move and he moves and this in my opinion is the most effective way to use his tactical a lot of players even pro mirages i guess i rarely see using this often they mainly just tap so it and go but in my opinion if you want to use mirage to his fullest any situation that you can use his tack and control the decoy yourself is the best because that is when your decoy looks the most realistic. I think this place this needs looks a, a lot more, more realistic than man. if you were to just have a clone running forward in a straight line doing nothing at all. But this tactical is actually very useful. Um, a lot of people downplay his usefulness. It's very useful. Um, lots of situations you can use it in. The most basic way is obviously just throwing it and it's having it run in a direction. Any enemies that might run into it won't take the risk of not shooting it. Because if it's a real mirage, that would be a problem. So 90% of teams will shoot it just to be safe. And that's just a win-win situation for you. There's one thing I will say is the cooldown is very short for his clone. So if you're not having a clone out... 80 to 90 percent of the time as a mirage player then you are playing him wrong because you need to be spamming these clones up as often as possible so using his tack effectively is a make or break of his character the main way you want to use his tack is either using it 
as a, a way to catch an enemy to break their crosshair placement or to make it a 50-50 chance of an enemy shooting you or the clone. So an example of breaking an enemy's crosshair placement is say this dummy is a real player and he's he knows I'm behind this box and he's looking at me like this. I'm behind the box be something good there. and he's waiting for me to peek. A way to break his crosshair placement is to quickly just place a clone. I think this place needs a little more me. Yeah. Players, all players, good or bad, have a reaction to seeing something move, especially when they're just hard, hard focusing on shooting anything that peaks. So the moment they see that, their crosser will shift even a little. They'll hesitate. That hesitation is everything for a mirage, because you will play off of that instantaneously. As a good mirage, you need to peek right away. The moment you see it, you see or hear the first bullet, you're peeking that. So you would boom. Simple as that. You need to play off every bit of hesitation off your opponent because every second matters. People won't just dump a whole mag into your clone. They'll only they'll only catch him for a second or maximum two seconds off guard and you need to play off of that. So to make it a 50-50 chance on your clone, and the other regard of using his tack is just running around with your clone either just running and like this and you're running alongside it or controlling it and having it move with you this way the enemy has to either choose to clone or choose you to shoot it's a 50 50 chance unless you're walking on dirt or water or anything that would give you away since only the mil the real mirage can kick up physical environment then there's no real way of them actually guessing which one you are so this right now in this situation if this is a real player and i'm running at him it's a 50 50 chance of him guessing the clone or me no higher no lower 50 50. so his tack is super effective because it's essentially you're never alone you're always going to have something with you think of it as your teammate you're always going to have something running alongside you don't feel like never that. feel outnumbered when you're playing mirage you always have a number advantage with him Um, there's one more way you can use his tack and more of a risky just last resort type of way, which is what I mentioned earlier. Whenever you're in a straight gunfight with an enemy and you some, for some reason do have your tack up because you did not use it beforehand to engage the fight, then what you could do is in the middle of a gunfight, since Mirage can use his tack while healing, reloading, shooting, you could be in the middle of the fight and you could throw out your clone. In the middle of the fight, the the enemy will shoot your clone. The purpose of this isn't to bamboozle or fool them in any way. The purpose of this is just to get one of their stray bullets to hit your clone. The moment it hits your clone, it's going to ping them for 3 seconds. It'll mark them through any wall or any object. And you'll play off of that because then now you can hide behind cover. You'll see every move they make and then you just decide your next play off of that. It's basically free info. Because you benefit either way if they shoot your clone. You don't, it doesn't always have to be a bamboozle. If they shoot your clone, that's free info for you and the whole team. Next up, I think the strongest part of his kit is actually his ult. His ult basically summons five clones. And then you would be the sixth, pretty sure. And then I think you can get seven with your tactical. So, as a general good rule of thumb... Whenever you use your ult, use your tactical, because the more clones, the better. The more clutter, the better. The more noise, the better. Just just spam everything if you're going to pop your ult at that point. But his ult has two main mechanics to it that make it a very strong tool. So when you pop his ult, you actually go full invis to en all enemies within like 5 to 10-ish meters. So unless they're really close to you, you're basically full invis and won't be able to be seen by anybody because if uh, you're pretty experienced with Mirage already, um, you should know that he has blue hollow lights on his arms and legs or just his arms. And an experienced player can see that and they'll play off of that. So which is why you would always want to take in the the rule of the attack and summon and pop it out of sight so don't let an enemy see you pop the ult because 
you'll just get fried. You'll get beamed. A smart player will see the invis lights and just beam you. So there's many ways to use his ult. You can use it offensively, defensively. You can use it to run. It's very, very versatile, very strong with only a one minute cooldown. So feel free to use it in every fight. It's, there's no reason to ever save it. If you want to use it, just use it. So there's one big mechanic you need to know and that's his center point. When you when you pop his ult, you go invis for one second and immediately after that one second, you start to blink out of the invis and at that split second that you're blinking out, all your clones will drop at a certain center point. So for example, I'll pop my ult right way? here and I just won't move. So now this is my center point. This is where all my clones will diverge from. So if I expand out, we'll circle from that point. And if I go back in, we'll all go back towards that point. So this is the area you want to play around. If you're not playing around this area, then you're highly screwed because if you're popping your ult and just bleeding from your clones, then there's no real point of popping your ult. Use your clones to your fullest. And if you use it in this manner, you will get the best value out of your ult. Now this doesn't apply to if you're just popping your ult to run. Of course, if you're popping it to run, then just run and split in any direction, get away, do whatever you need to, to live. But in 90% of cases where you're using this ult to push, to to hold back a push, you wanna use you wanna think about your center point hard. Because this is where your clones will do something called a shuffle. So when you pop in that center point, your clones will mimic your movements to the exact point. So, so a shuffle is when you run through that center point and all your clones diverge. So if I run across the center point, that clone right there would come to where I am here. So I'm essentially swapping spots with all my clones. So a good Mirage would utilize the shuffle constantly. He would utilize it up until all his clones expire. So you would you would shuffle, boom. Now all your clones just mixed up. The enemy lost track of which one you are. This is when you take the play. Um, you could also run around in a circle and then go for the shuffle. What I like to do is I run around in a circle, shuffle, Pop my clone sending hey, out the other way. They it usually slides Check out. The enemy sees a sliding clone and then they they try to see if that's a real one. They quickly realize it's not, and you play off of that as well. An example of that is this. Circle, shuffle, slide. And you play off that hesitation. Shuffle, shuffle. And remember. Enemies will be looking for which clone is looking at them because they know that you as the Mirage want to take shots in as an opportunity while your ult is up. So you want to play off of that knowing that they want to counter you. So instead of looking at them when you pop your ult, after you shuffle, you already have the info. After you shuffle, you look backwards. So now your back is turned to them. So now every clone in front of them is their highest priority right now they want to deal with the people looking at them this is a very high risk high reward mirage strat and a lot of good mirages can actually pull this off pretty often so it so, goes something like this so i'm finding the enemy and then i want to shuffle to make use of my clones so boom and you can repeat this as many times as you want until you feel confident that they've lost you. Because remember, as Mirage, you need to be thinking as the enemy more than any other character in the game. So whenever you feel confident that they've lost you, they shot your clone a couple times, that's when you can either try to reshuffle and get another shot in on them or just straight up turn around and just beam them. Because they already wasted like half, maybe even their full mag just trying to figure out which one is you. Just turn on them and just end them right then and there. Um, his ult is also very good for engaging multiple people at once. So for example, say say this clone had a teammate or say this dummy had a teammate like to his right right here or something. This way. Say there's like a wall extending out. How I, I would want to engage this as a mirage is I would want to find a way to pop my ult in a way where my clones expand out everywhere but this box. 
So in that case, that would be this. A decoy escape deployed. Boom. Now all of my clones are exposed, but I'm not. So that enemy right here, Got one here. is going to be focused on everyone here. Meanwhile, I have a free 1v1 with whoever is way. here. And to, t to go into another advanced tactic you can use with his ult is using is tracking through his clones and his ult. His clones, not only are they clutter for the enemy, but for you as a Mirage main, you need to know how to play through his clones fully. They, they can't be a disadvantage to you in any situation whatsoever. So you have to learn how to use them in every situation. So an example would be you would have to learn how to track through your clones. Bam. So Bam. knowing knowing where the enemy is through your clone My ultimate's good to go. is highly key to using Mirage to the fullest. This is one of the main ways you can get um, pro players. People who know how to counter Mirage, they'll, they'll try to just tell who you are. But no one ever expects the Mirage to just beam you through his whole barrage of clones. Like, look at that. They'll just be clutter fucked. And don't forget, all every time he's shooting, every time a bullet hits one of your clones, that's a three second mark to further aid you in tracking past your clones. So give that a practice, learn how to play past your clones. Don't let it be a disadvantage. Whenever you have a clone out, it should always be an advantage. You should you should never lose a 1v1 whenever you have a clone out. Now, Mirage is actually one of the best, if not the best character for taking outnumbered fights, considering he's never actually outnumbered when you think about it. Um, taking out multiple enemies is very easy with Mirage. One, one tack decoy is all it can take sometimes to get a free knock. And from there, you just play your typical 1v2 situation. One pushes you and the other tries to revive. Another 1v1. And just use your general game knowledge to to, to win the 1v3. But to get in more, more in depth with the invis part of his ult, which is a lot of... A lot of people don't pay attention to the invis part of his ult. Yes, it can be countered, but that doesn't change the fact that it's still invis. So, whenever you pop this ult, like I said, try to have it out of, out of line of sight. So you can have the most effective usage of it. And what I like to do is, I like to play, I like to make as much distance with his invis as possible. You can actually get pretty far with his invis. Like, if you wanted to go from this box Let's to this, you would just to the slide, boom. The enemy, if they weren't paying attention hard enough, they never saw me left from there to here. But now all they see is a bunch of clones. Yet again, this is where I have the advantage because all of my clones are exposed, but I'm not. So I'm free to take any angle, any peek at any time I want with full control. Um... Combining his attack with his ult is also very important. Like I mentioned earlier, always use your attack whenever you have a chance with your ult. <clears throat> now his ult for running away is actually not the worst. Um, it's better than just straight landing somewhere and praying that you don't get knocked down. Because having your clones scatter in every direction is pretty useful. Just, just... Try to keep in mind that you're not running in the most predictable path. So if I'm being chased from behind here check it over there. and the enemies know I want to get to here, I would go behind this box this and pop my invis as soon as I reach that box. And then I would immediately turn somewhere else. They saw me take the left path, but you can immediately turn and take the right. And just have your clones just fuck up their audio and their visuals. And you it'll, it'll give you a way higher chance of escaping than any other non-movement legend. So, always try to take an alternate path when running away with his ult. Because if you just take the same predictable path, then it won't be of any use. But, there's one high skill tactic that you need to learn with Mirage, it is playing line of sight and learning how to break that and tracking through your Mirage clones. Once you master just tracking through your Mirage clones, 
that'll you already be better than 90% of Mirage players. Because most Mirage players, they pop their all and then they just they swing out like this, and then there's basically nothing to help you with your ult. Your ult's essentially useless at this point. Because once you start shooting, every other clone is useless. If you need to keep, if you're gonna take a one v one fight, you need to keep your clones tight, close to you. So then, at any moment, you could shuffle quickly, a quick shuffle, and then re-engage. Having your clone split too far from you is probably probably like a make or break of a fight. Because that will that'll end you. An enemy will see if you try to shuffle with your clones if you're too close. So if you're if you're out all the way out here, Sending out my decoy. your clone is here, and you try to make a shuffle, that'll be the most obvious, most predictable shuffle ever. You have to be tight and close, and then shuffle out. Now, his ult has many other uses. Um, like I said, it's very versatile ult. You can use his emotes actually, if you have one of the emotes that duplicate yourself, you can actually combine your emotes with your clones. And in times of desperate need where you just need to buy time, you can actually do this and it'll just double all your clones and it'll create so much visual clutter and noise that Man, most enemies won't even there. want to shoot you. Something like that. Every time I've done this, an enemy sees it and they walk around a corner, they they don't even want to try figuring out who it is. They just they just dip. So it will look something like this. Send it on my decoy. Shuffle it up. And then boom. And while you're doing all this, you can look in third person where they are. And you just take your shot. And they won't know that you're looking at them because you're in an emo. So that's a very underutilized tool that 90% of Mirage players don't use. And you need to start implementing that into your kit like as soon as possible. Because to make Mirage the high A tier character he is, maybe even low S tier, you need to be using every single one of these techniques. Because if you're just using the basic shoot and go clone and, and the brain dead monkey ape, I'll pop my ult and I'll swing you, and then you're not going to get far with Mirage in higher, higher tier lobbies. Now, if I were to push this dummy from this box with my ult, there's lots of ways you can do it. You can either pre-fire the ult and expand outwards, so then now he has to take a gamble of who it is, or you can take the what I like to do, the invis approach, where, I, like I mentioned earlier, I would send the clone out, to break crosshair placement and to cause hesitation and in that split second of hesitation instead of playing off of it and shooting I'll use that as an opportunity to close the gap and get as close as I can to him even behind him so it looks something like this Taking him out with the decoy. Decoy escape deployed. and now in that one second the enemy went from hesitating on that clone to now suddenly having to 180 and look at one two three four five six people behind him from here, you could decide to keep trolling him and let him guess which one you are, or just one mag him right away. That is one of the most effective ways to break someone's neck. Just cause hesitation and get behind them right away. A lot of people don't actually use the invis part of his ult. They just pop it in front of someone, and then they just pop it and they're they're done that's all they do they just pop it and then they just fight like normal they don't they don't consider how their clones are moving they don't consider who's getting fooled by the clones and who's not you need to be taking all of this into account if you want to actually fool top higher ranked players who who know how to counter mirage so uh, the other technique i talked about was expanding your clones out from cover and that's basically when you pop your ult standing still and you allow your clones to back out of cover basically so they think it's only one person, but when you peek out and you walk out, all your clones will diverge from this center point. It looks something like this. Boom. Remember what I said earlier where looking at the enemy has a high chance of giving away your position? Because if you take into account how my clones are, there's no other clone looking at him but maybe potentially this one. So taking that to account, when you pop that, you want to you want to come out of cover looking either to the side or to the back so then all the other clones will be looking towards the enemy so you, you will just back out like this now a lot of other minuscule tips I could give is whenever you're crafting say this is a crafter you could place your clone on it 
hold the button, go to the other side of the crafter, and you can let go, and you can go into the crafter, and the clone will actually perfectly go into the crafter with you. So, yet again, causing a 50-50 chance of the clone or you getting shot. So, um, if you're running away, there's a strat you could do where you and your clone split direction, so instead of just tapping it in one direction and running the other, which is really simple and easy to figure out, tap and hold your clone out and release it, but before you release it, you want a 180. So hold it, and then release it once you're 180, and then start running. Because now your clone will mimic your actions, but you're 180. So as you can see, the clone's running back to me. But if I turn back around and I run, it'll run away from me. So always be thinking about how you can man manipulate your clones to be as realistic as possible. Because just tapping your attack and letting it do this is very useless. It'll fool only the most shitty of players, but... If you really want to fool someone with a clone running, just tapping it, um, holding out a nade and just tapping the clone gives it a different running animation, which is something a lot of players are not used to. So you can use that to your advantage of how you please. Um, that's pretty much it. So use everything you've learned from this video to play Mirage to his fullest. Um can't really think of much more as long as you're mastering all these techniques uh you should be able to bring out the full potential mirage and play and diamond master maybe pred lobbies pretty easy and yeah that should be it